yesterday we had a quick introduction to digital data transmission. So, you generate digital data at the edges of a clock, transmit it over a channel and you want to receive that. So, we will now look at a typical receiver and then see uh, I mean some properties of uh, a channel and then see what problems come uh, while trying to uh, figure out what the transmitted data is. Okay. So, as usual we will assume a transmitter usually abbreviated to T x which sends out data. Let us assume that at this point we have ideal rectangular data for now. Okay. And we will also assume that there is a clock somewhere which was used to generate the data okay. and by convention typically I use uh, uh, I assume that the transitions of data happen at the falling edge of the clock and the rising edge of the clock is in the middle of the data. It could be other way around also, but this is what I will assume. Now, what is it the meaning of uh, receiving this? You get some data okay. and when you have binary uh, symbol you have to decide which what is the symbol value okay. and the way we show it is that we have some threshold value I will call it let us say V threshold okay. and then we look at the sign Okay, it is an ideal comparator. There is one more thing that is missing, I will point that out. This is the sign, and here you get the received symbols. Okay. Now, not only this, do you do this uh, comparison once every T s. Okay, if T s is the symbol interval, you have a clock here with the same symbol interval T s and once every clock cycle you decide the sign of the bit. Okay. And for now do not worry about how we get this clock etcetera etcetera. Right. So, if this is the received uh, voltage, I will assume that will uh, this way this point will be V R x minus the threshold and <coughs> this is the sign of V R x minus the threshold at the sampling instant whatever the clock edges are. Later we will see how to implement all of these things. Okay. So, what can go wrong in this why go wrong meaning the why what could make the received symbols be different from the transmitted symbols. Huh? Yeah. Noise okay. what did you say you said something yeah. So, there can be added noise. Okay. So, for now we will use the <coughs> standard model uh, we will refer all the noise to the input of the receiver. Let us assume that this part is the receiver. I think all of you know this the transmitter is usually abbreviated T x and the receiver is R x. So, we have some V n noise that is added. The noise may not be added exactly here, there could be some noise from the transmit side which is usually small and then uh, every one of the receiver components has its noise, but there is this concept of input referred noise which you would be probably familiar with that you refer all the noise to the input of the receiver that is this has the same effect as the sum of all the noises in the receiver. Okay. Now, what is this noise? What is the value? I mean I do not mean uh, like how many millivolts and so on, but what is the value of uh, 
Noise. Huh? KT. No. No, the point is that it is some, uh, I mean the noise that we are referring to here is some inherently random process. Okay. Now, in the literature like many things are called noise. Okay. Anything other than the signal can be called noise. But in this case in particular, we are looking at uh, noise such as, are you familiar with thermal noise of a resistor? Yeah. So, if you have, what does, what does it mean for a resistor to have noise? Oh, no, that is okay, but uh, a resistor as far as I know obeys Ohm's law, right? V equals I R. So, what is this noise business? No, that is ok. So, what happens? I mean is V not equal to I R? Is V not equal to I R? Variation of? No, it is not variation of resistance with temperature. That is something else entirely. That means that if you uh, try to measure the proportionality constant between V and I at 0 degrees and 100 degrees, you will get different values. That is not the, that is not noise. That is not what we are talking about. So, this is what I know. Is this wrong? Wrong. Okay. In what way is it wrong? Where is, where is the noise now? What is the meaning of noise here? What is the noise of a resistor? Huh? 4 k dr. What is 4 k dr? Like where, where, so where should I? I mean, I have a picture of a resistor here. I do not have any noise. So, where should I insert the noise now? In series with the. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. That is correct. So, I could have it like this, right? I have some V n, or you are saying that there is an alternative model where I have some I n. Okay. So, what does it mean now? So, what are this V n and I n? What is the value of V n? What is the value of I n? Mm, it is not the value of V n is not 4 root of 4 k d r. What is uh, how many of you are not familiar with noise of a resistor? Okay. Everybody else is familiar. What is the value of V n or what is the value of I n? Okay. What is that? How much is that? What is the dimension of 4 k dr? 4 square per hertz. So, yeah, that is the spectral density. See, what is the meaning of noise? What it means is that if I feed a current I to a resistor R, what should I measure here? I times R. Now, uh, the fact that you have noise means that you have some extra stuff V n. Okay. You will measure I R plus V n. Now, this V n is not some fixed value it is a random process and you know some things about it. What do you, I mean what kind of noise is it? There is some term for it. It is called white noise. Yeah, it is thermal noise. It is because of the thermal uh, random motion of the electrons inside the resistor that it happens. It is called uh, thermal noise, but uh, the kind of spectral density it produces which is constant at all frequencies that is characterized as white noise and the spectral density that is I will call it S V n that is the standard notation is 4 k t r. Okay. Now, what does this mean? So, if I take this and let us say I have an ideal oscilloscope. Hmm? Okay. So, I have an ideal oscilloscope what will I see? I mean I should have ideally seen I mean 
constant right which is equal to i times r what will i see now okay so you say that it will be around this but wiggling around that okay so how much is the wiggle no it's not yeah so <coughs> hopefully these things uh, will become clearer later so first of all what is the spectral how do you characterize noise or any any random event what are the yeah mean variance. variance so in general the probability density function from that you can get the mean and variance so what is the mean of this noise huh? zero by definition it is zero okay the mean value of the current is what is given by ohm's law and around that you have these wiggles okay so if i look at the voltage across as a resistor if i try to if i pass an ideal current i i should have got ir but i'll get ir plus something but that plus something has mean value of zero so that means that uh, av on average you get ir at least thankfully otherwise we would be in even more trouble but uh, then you have the variance what kind of distribution is it if you take uh, values of noise from let's say you do this you understand this uh, probability distribution and so on what is the meaning of probability distribution what am i plotting when i am plotting probability distribution or density function what's the variance that variable that we are considering that no no i know but what experiment am i doing here when i ask you what is the probability density function of this voltage what is it that i am doing yeah yeah actually it is the ensemble of course it's what you said also works so what i do is see the the probability it's always you can't tell what happens if i toss a dice like for instance so you what you do you let a million people toss the dice and then say something about the collective properties okay similarly here also i take like 1000 uh, copies of this experiment i passing through r and in every case i measure the voltage at some instant okay they will all be different from each other because of noise what will be the average value of all the measurements what will be the average value of all the measurements i make million i mean i call a few seat and measure this okay i passing through r what will be the average value of all your measurements i r obviously because somebody will have positive noise somebody else will have negative noise and if you will take large enough numbers all those will average out to zero what will be the variance of the measurements or the standard deviation no what is 4 ktr okay like everybody is throwing out 4 ktr what is that what is that quantity spectral density spectral density okay what is the meaning of spectral density yeah yeah what is the variance of uh, this what is the variance of the so now we say that is a good thing we started off with this because this noise stuff is uh, fundamental to for a resistor in particular this will be 4 ktr by the way i think you know that uh, the spectra right sometimes they are plotted double sided that is for both plus and minus f sometimes single sided this 4 ktr is the single sided spectral density that is so this means that the uh this is valid for f from 0 to infinity now if you have occasion to use double sided spectral density you should use 2 ktr okay it will give the same answer so this is the noise spectral density of a resistor and then i mean uh, when you have a random process you have all these things you have mean variance etc and then you have this uh, spectral density which you can also plot what is the relation between this and uh, the variance so 
special density adds? Area under. Ah, the what is the variance? It is the area under the spectral density. Okay, it's the total area under the spectral density. So, what is the variance of uh, resistor noise? No, no. I mean, I told you that uh, I have a resistor with 4 KTR, right? You see the spectral density here. What is the area? Infinite. Okay. So, according to this model, actually, it is infinite. Of course, there is something wrong with the model in that uh, it is not exactly white. Okay. So, what happens is, I mean, I don't want to get into too, too much of the detail. So, inside a resistor, the electrons will go hit uh, some fixed. Uh, uh, atoms in the lattice and then bounce off and then go hit something else and so on. So, there is some average time between them that is known as the mean free time. Okay. Now, this noise is largely flat up to the reciprocal of the mean free time. Okay. Now, for time scale shorter than the mean free time or frequencies more than the reciprocal of it, we cannot uh, it is not actually flat. So, this also if you go off to it will go do something like that. Okay, but of course, this uh, frequency is probably of the order of 10 to the 12 hertz or something, it is related to the mean free time. So, that model itself is not valid, but let us not worry about it because we will not ever reach that frequency. So, this also means that when you talk about noise, you should also be aware of uh, the bandwidth uh, in which you are looking at it. Somewhere in the circuit, there will be some band limiting, it has to be there. You will obviously not measure infinite noise ever. Okay. So, uh, you will measure some finite noise. What is it that you will measure? For instance, like you pointed out earlier. So, I said ideal scope, but the ideal scope also has some bandwidth. Okay. So, let us say I have a 100 megahertz bandwidth scope. Now, of course, a real scope would not do that, but we will assume that this means that the scope will filter out everything outside the 0 to 100 megahertz bandwidth okay and inside that you will see <coughs> whatever frequency content is inside that you will see that okay so in this case what will you see what will be the variance so let's say this was a 1 kilo ohm resistor the resistance is 1 kilo ohm what is the spectral density Please calculate. Hey, no, no, use some standard notation, right? Electron volts has uh, what is the? It is the energy, right? So, what is it? What is the spectral density? One. Aran? What is one not for? One not for what? But electron volts. What is the dimension of uh, electron volt? Energy. But I mean, this is spectral density. No, no, like don't do all that. I think uh, units of spectral density is a volt square per hertz. I want to answer in volt square per hertz. Ten to the minus seventeen. One point six. Yeah. So all I want is calculation of four KTR, right? So, one thing that is useful to remember is K T at room temperature is approximately 4 times 10 to the minus 21, sorry, 10 to the minus uh, 21. What is the units of K T? Huh? Energy, yeah, 4 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. Okay. So, what is 4 K T R? 
Yeah, 4 kTr has units of volt square per hertz. So, if you take r to be 10 to the 3, you will get 16 times 10 to the minus 18 volt square per hertz. Okay. Some decimal points will differ, but I think this is a good enough uh, approximation. And also, it is proportional to the absolute temperature. So, whether you take 0 degrees or 100 degrees, it does change, but not by a whole lot. Okay. It changes by 373 divided by 273, it is not a whole lot. No, it is always uh, you should uh, as engineers, you should always calculate numbers and get a feel for the numbers. Now, uh, many times in uh, electronic circuits, instead of using volt square per hertz, you specify the square root of this and in volt per square root hertz. Okay. There is a reason for it, because then you can calculate the standard deviation directly. right? So, this one you can see that if I at least you know that this is 4 times 10 to the minus 9 volt per square root hertz, the whole thing squared. right? So, anyway, this is the spectral density. Okay. So, now I do the same experiment. This is a 1 kilo ohm resistor, it goes through a scope of ideally, I mean, ideal scope of 100 megahertz bandwidth. So, what is the variance I see? Variance of standard deviation. Yeah, yeah, calculate the number and tell me the number. Okay. What? Yeah. So, the variance of this distribution will be 16 times 10 to the minus 8 volt square or the standard deviation will be 4 times 10 to the minus 4 volts. Is that correct? Hmm? What is that? 10 to the minus? Oh, yeah, sorry, 10 to the minus 10. So, so, this is 4 times 10 to the minus 5 volts. So, what does it mean for the experiment that we did? I have uh, millions of uh, people doing this, I passing through R and the result going through an ideal 100 megahertz oscilloscope and I sample the values. I ask everybody to read out the values at a particular instant and I plot the distribution. What will I see? What kind of distribution will it be? Gaussian. Okay. What it means is that if I plot the distribution, I will see. First of all, <coughs> let me say that uh, this I was. I mean, as a general thing, I could take anything. I will just take zero. So that means I should have said read zero volts instead of that. I read this. Okay. But whatever the mean value is around that, I will have a distribution like this, which is a Gaussian. Okay. Now, so <coughs> essentially <laughs> the values that you give out, there is a discrete number of values when I do this experiment, but it will follow this Gaussian distribution. What is the expression for uh, Gaussian distribution, I mean the probability density function of a Gaussian distribution, hmm? 1 by huh? sigma minus oh yeah, this is for a 0 mean. Uh, Gaussian, otherwise you will take x minus sigma. Okay. Now, this is what is known as the standard deviation <coughs> and I think you would remember some properties of it. Well, I mean you keep hearing about 3 sigma and so on, what is that all about? Huh. Is that 96.8 percent or 99, right? Is that? Okay. So, basically 1 sigma is somewhere here okay. and 2 sigma is there, 
3 sigma is there and so on. So, basically what the probability density function tells you is how likely you are to see any of these values. You are very likely to see values around 0 and less likely as the value becomes larger and larger. Okay? And typically like beyond plus minus 3 sigma there are very few instances. It is for sure not 0. In fact, this distribution extends to infinity. There is some pro small probability of seeing even an infinitely large noise, okay. but beyond plus minus 3 sigma it becomes quite small. Okay. So, roughly speaking I mean this is not true as we will see because we are looking for very small probabilities of error also, but uh, when you just give a Gaussian distribution you kind of uh, assume that the values are confined to plus minus 3 sigma. This is very crudely, okay. Do not take this as do not assume that it is actually confined to that, it is not that, that one. So, what is it that I will see in the oscilloscope then? I will say wiggles around it, okay. And uh, you know, if you uh, have used the oscilloscope, basically, if there are a large number of instances, the trace will kind of look thick, and then as you have smaller number of uh, instances, it becomes thinner and thinner. So, it will uh, the wiggles will uh, it will wiggle around this, it will be kind of uh, dark in the middle and then it will keep getting lighter and lighter. And like I said you are not likely to see too many values beyond plus minus 3 sigma. Okay. Now, what is the sigma here? Yeah, that is 40 micro volts. Okay. So, that means that you will see sort of a band which spans about plus minus 120 micro volts. Of course, you will see you will have occasionally values beyond this, but that is basically what you see. You have to basically connect everything I mean all the mathematical stuff to what you actually measure Okay, that is the whole point of this. So, what is the meaning of spectral density? Spectral density is a measure of how uh, correlated the you know in fact, the spectral density is the Fourier transform of what? Autocorrelation function. Autocorrelation function tells you essentially like how the noise changes from one instant to the next. In fact, how does the what about white noise? How does it change? The yeah, there is no correlation at all. Okay, you could have uh, uh, some value at this instant, and even the, the very next instant, whether it's one picosecond later or one microsecond later, you simply can't tell anything. It can be anywhere in the entire distribution. Okay, but when you have when you limit the bandwidth that is no longer true okay right because <coughs> the spectral density here of vn is white Okay. If it is a 1 kilo ohm resistor, what did we say it was? 16 times 10 to the minus 18 volt square per hertz extending all the way to infinity. If you measure the spectral density here, this is a filter, ideal filter of 100 megahertz bandwidth. What will be the spectral density there? Yeah, filter transfer function square. So, it has unity gain up to 100 megahertz and 0 after that. So, the spectral density there would be this value is still the same because we have the same uh, gain. Okay. In general, if you have some uh, input to a filter, okay, it has a certain spectral density and the output of a filter has a certain spectral density. How are the two related? S V i times the magnitude squared of the transfer function is the okay. Now, what is the inverse Fourier transform of this? It is delta. Okay. What is the inverse Fourier transform of that? Huh? So, basically okay. So, what it means is if you band limit it 
what is happening to the correlation? For short times, it is correlated, right? If you look at a very short time, and if you look at very long times, actually again the correlation becomes small, okay? And that's the effect of filtering. Basically, the filtering makes the nearby samples related. The smaller the bandwidth, the longer the correlation. Okay. We don't have to worry too much of these details because typically we deal with the total noise, total noise variance that is there for the purpose of serial links and so on. That's enough because what we want to find is the probability of error and so on. But at least we need to know the basics of this. I guess uh, you've not done an analog IC design course where you do a lot of noise calculations, right? So, yeah, we will have to do some of that here, but essentially every component will have noise. What is the, what does it mean? First of all, every component will have a VI relationship. For instance, for a resistance it is V equals I R, for a MOS transistor it is the square law and so on, okay. Now, the meaning of noise is that the actual current is the current that is given by either Ohm's law or the square law plus some noise current, okay. And the noise current will have its own properties. It has uh, usually it is specified by the spectral density. The way to interpret it is you take this ideal component and bias it up in some way. So, let us say you have a MOS transistor, you bias it with VGS of 2 volts, VDS of 3 volts and so on. It is supposed to give you 100 microamps of current, but it gives you 100 microamps plus some noise. Now, again just like with the resistor, the thermal noise of a MOS transistor is white and so that noise has infinite variance. Of course, in reality it does not, but according to the model. Now, how do you interpret this? Somewhere there has to be some band limiting. That means that if you take this current, pass it through an ideal oscilloscope of uh, some bandwidth, you will see wiggles in the current. Instead of 100 microamps, you will get some 100 microamps plus some delta. And how much that is, you can calculate from the variance. So, you take spectral density, integrate it within the bandwidth of the <coughs> uh, filter. So, that gives you the variance. And the actual uh, thing that you see is a Gaussian distribution with that variance, okay. Now, I described it as ensemble average that is uh, like a million people doing this experiment and you plot the distribution, you will get this uh, Gaussian. Now, there are a certain <coughs> random processes which are known as ergodic where uh, the ensemble average is the same as, uh, the ensemble properties are the same as uh, taking it at different times. So, you do not need necessarily a million people to do this experiment, you could do it yourself, but you take million samples at different instants of time and you will get the same distribution, okay. This is not true for every random process, but for this noise it is true, okay. Is this fine? This correlation also means that uh, correlation tells how much uh, whether you can tell something about uh, let us say the sample at uh, 1 nanosecond by measuring it at 0 nanoseconds, okay. Now, in some cases, if in case of white noise, you cannot tell anything, okay. It does not matter whether it is whether you take the next sample like 1 nanoseconds away, 1 second away or 1 picosecond away, you just cannot tell anything in pure white noise. But in reality, you will always have some band limiting and this is kind of something that you physically expect, right. Things possibly cannot be changing within 1 picosecond, I mean that is what you would feel, okay. And that is true. That means, what you are imagining is a system of bandwidth that is much smaller than like a terahertz. So, you feel that hey 1 picosecond what can change and it is true in reality it does not change that much, okay, because that is what this means, right, this correlation here. So, what is the location of this null if the if the bandwidth is 100 megahertz? Yeah, what is that? How much is it? Yeah, what numbers, 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 10 nanoseconds, okay. So, if you look at a sample now, and a sample like uh, 1 microsecond later, it is probably not correlated because the correlation has died out. But if you look at something now and then 1 nanosecond later, it is actually quite well correlated, okay. So, that is what band limiting does, right. Low pass filtering means that it makes the changes slower. So, that means that you can actually tell something about the sample later by looking at the sample now. But how much later it is depends on the bandwidth. It is all just the inverse relationship between time and frequency, but that correlation stuff is something that we do not have to worry about too much. So, what we are more concerned with is you should be able to calculate the integrated noise in any situation, okay. <coughs> but uh, yeah, one of the things to keep in mind is that uh, the ideal noise models are always uh, this white noise models which have infinite variance. So, you have to have band limiting somewhere in the system. Now, you will have it. Okay, you just have to recognize it. Like for instance, even in this measurement, even if it did not explicitly limit anything, 
there will be a parasitic capacitance here that itself will limit the variance ok. It is not as though you can make a resistor without parasitic capacitance right. So, if you take a resistor and even if you imagine that hey I am only measuring the voltage across the resistor I do not have any other thing and I have a super wide bandwidth oscilloscope the resistor will have, will have its own capacitance which will probably limit the variance anyhow ok. Any questions? So, noise is basically what you get because of a random process which is beyond what you what is described by the uh, V i relationship of an element ok. So, like I said if you pass i through r I would have expected i times r, but actually I get i times r plus some v n ok and the spectral density of this is 4 k d r ok <coughs> and the units are volt square per hertz right and to be able to calculate the variance calculate anything useful from this you have to have some band limiting somewhere ok to some bandwidth let us say b then the variance becomes 4 k t r times b or the standard deviation sigma will be square root of 4 k t r times b ok. Now, uh, as engineers it is worthwhile remembering some numbers k t at room temperature is 4 times 10 to the minus 21 joules and for 1 kilo ohm you calculated 4 k t r to be how much 16 times 10 to the minus 18 volt square per hertz ok. Now, like I said you frequently specify the square root of this which is 4 times 10 to the minus 9 volt per root hertz ok. The reason to do this is the following it is easier to calculate sigma <coughs> ok. So, you know that the sigma is the square root of the spectral density which is what is given here it is 4 times 10 to the minus 9 volt per square root hertz times square root of the bandwidth ok. So, if you have a bandwidth of 100 megahertz or 10 to the 8 hertz square root of uh, 100 megahertz how much is it 10 to the 4 square root hertz ok. So, it is easy to calculate from here. So, this one is 4 times 10 to the minus 9 volt per square root hertz times 10 to the 4. So, you get 4 times 10 to the minus 5 volts ok. Typically, this is expressed as again for 1 kilo ohm it is worthwhile remembering that the spectral density is 4 nano volt per root hertz. You just think of this uh, nano volt per root hertz or volts per root hertz and as an alternative unit it is the same thing that we are specifying just as a square root ok. And <coughs> for this particular bandwidth it happens to be 0.4 micro volt ok. It is also worthwhile remembering the numbers. Now, one of the things that you see is that as you make uh, circuits with higher and higher data rates you will have circuits with higher and higher bandwidths ok. So, the, so the same noise spectral density will get integrated to a larger and larger variance ok because 100 megahertz in fact is much lower than any of the numbers I was throwing around yesterday right I was only in the gigabits per second. So, you expect that the bandwidth will also be many gigahertz ok. So, the sp same spectral density will have higher noise and as you know and we will also discuss it later higher noise means higher bit error rate. So, how will you fix this I mean we will see the specific techniques later, but what all can you do to lower the noise you cannot increase the signal strength typically one way to overcome noise is to transmit a larger signal ok. Now, as you know in fact as you go to lower and lower process technologies the supply voltage is in fact shrinking it is not becoming bigger ok. So, the amount of voltage that you uh, transmit is small 
there are also other reason to keep it small because the power dissipation will become larger if you make it larger and larger. So, how else will you reduce noise? Oh, why, why will modulation reduce noise? I mean just look at this expression and tell me what all are there in the expression that you can reduce. Huh? Reduce the resistance that is possible you reduce the resistance and then what does it mean? It will lower noise, but uh, if you have a circuit with smaller resistances you will have more current flowing and you will end up taking more power anyway that is what will happen. Okay. So, anything that you do to reduce noise invariably increases power or you can keep it in a refrigerator. So, that uh, T will reduce and noise will reduce, but the refrigerator will take power. So, <laughs> so I mean it is not a it is not just a joke actually if you calculate with an ideal refrigerator you will find that the amount of power that you have to spend in ideal refrigerator is exactly the same as if you reduce the resistance. Okay. So, okay. so you have whatever you do to if you have wider bandwidth and you want a better signal to noise ratio you have to increase the power either you explicitly do it by increasing the signal strength or you try to reduce noise which will uh, make you end up burning more power okay, in any which way you do it. Okay. So, that is why it is hard to uh, make higher frequency circuits with uh, low power. Now, there is a certain amount of uh, fundamental power that you have to spend and in the circuit implementation there will be a lot of overheads. So, what you try to do is to reduce all those overheads. Okay. So, that is one way that you try to implement uh, lower and lower power circuits. Okay. Now, I showed this as a voltage, but exactly the same thing will happen if uh, I have V and R and I expect that the current here is V by R. In reality, you will have this uh, noise current source I n which you cannot separate out. So, you will have V by R plus I n. Okay. What is the spectral density of this? What is the spectral density of I n? Over K d divided by R. This just comes from the Thevenin and Norton equivalents. Okay. <coughs> Over K d by R, what are the units? Ampere square per hertz. Okay. So, again, if you somehow manage to probe this current and pass it through a filter of a certain bandwidth. Okay, and measure the output current. What will you see? You will see basically a Gaussian distribution with a variance for 4 k t divided by r times b amperes. Okay. So, in general you will be given spectral densities of uh, anything that is random and if you want to calculate the variance you have to integrate the spectral density from 0 to infinity. Okay. So, what is the variance? You have the autocorrelation function as a function of the time shift. Autocorrelation function at 0 time shift is the variance. Okay. Therefore, the integral under the spectral density is the variance. Okay. Any questions about any of this? Oh, from the resistor that is actually a <laughs> that derivation there are several derivations which uh, I am familiar with, but it is just too complicated to discuss I can send you references. So, one of the ways the kind of the fundamental way is to I mean you know that uh, the noise appears because of this uh, random collisions with uh, fixed atoms. Okay. Now, there are some theorems I think you can look this up. Shockley Rymo theorem, which tells you if an electron is moving here. Okay, so, this is the resistor, the length is L, and then you can have the way uh, like cross sectional area. If an electron is moving here, how much current will flow there? That will tell you something. And from the knowledge of this uh, mean free paths and so on, you can calculate the values. That's, so, that is one way. 
The original derivation was by Nyquist, the same guy who did the sampling theorem. That derivation is actually more difficult to understand, but I can just send you the reference anyhow. Okay, but uh, whichever way you do it, you will end up getting uh, four KT R. So, now what this means is first of all <coughs> this V n we are specifying a noise which has a Gaussian distribution. We will assume that every I mean this kind of uh, random stuff will have Gaussian distribution we do not have to worry about it that is largely true okay? that is always true. So, this will have Gaussian distribution and I will specify the standard deviation or the variance of it. Now, because I am specifying a finite standard deviation it is obviously I have already taken a finite bandwidth. I mean if I take infinite bandwidth I will get infinite uh, this one although I have not shown the filter here whenever you talk about this bit error rate you must have done these calculations in communication systems right you have some uh, finite bandwidth. Uh, I mean depending on what calculations you did if you remember the ideal receiver right there is some integrated dump receiver there is some uh, uh, spectral density and from there you can calculate the variance of noise. Now, we will assume that you have done all that like the receiver structure is there we know the bandwidth and you will have some variance and from that you can calculate the bit error rate. Okay. So, this we will use uh, like every now and then to calculate bit error rate. In our case <coughs> basically our goal is to keep the signal sufficiently above noise. So, that you have uh, adequately small bit error rates. Okay. What is good enough bit error rate depends completely on the context. So, in case of wireless communications I mean typically the bit error rates are quite uh, poor I mean of the order of 10 to the minus 3 and so on and I use a lot of coding to bring down the bit error rate further. In case of the serial link communications we do not want to use that kind of uh, like heavy coding at that high speed that will also consume power. So, the raw bit error rate itself should be of the order of 10 to the minus 12 or even lower. Okay. So, that with coding you will get some astoundingly small bit error rate basically you should not be making any errors that is the bottom line. Okay. Any questions about any of this? So, <coughs> I will go to that, but before that anyway because we have to discuss noise since a lot of you do not have the background of noise especially related to circuits. So, the standard calculation that we do is so let us say I have I have a resistor R and I already said that invariably there is a parasitic capacitance associated with it okay. and I will model it as a capacitance across the resistor. Okay. And the resistor has a certain noise I mean I can think of it as an equivalent voltage noise or an equivalent current noise you will get exactly the same result with either because this is the, these are just having an equivalence of each other. Okay. Now, the question is what are the I mean uh, let me call this V c the voltage across the capacitor. What I want you to calculate are spectral density of V c I mean this is the only input in the circuit right the random noise and the variance of V C. Okay. How will you go about calculating this? How will you calculate this? You have to first calculate the transfer function from you have to calculate the transfer function V C by V N. This you do by your standard Laplace transform stuff. Okay. So, this is H of S okay, or you calculate V C by n it will get the same. Now, <coughs> what is the spectral density of V C? S V C is S V n times mod of H, but remember typically this is expressed in terms of the linear frequency f in hertz. Okay. So, you have to convert this. So, this will be j 2 pi f do not get confused between radians and hertz because uh, spectral density invariably is specified as a density per hertz okay, that is just the convention. 
Oh, yeah, there is nothing wrong with uh, reducing it as per radians per second, but that is not what is done. 4 kTr is the density per hertz. Okay. So, you also convert this. So, this will be the this will be the spectral density of V c and then you can integrate this from 0 to infinity with respect to again f not omega you will get the variance. Okay. Now, this calculation is simple enough please do this before tomorrow's class and the result is quite interesting we will discuss that.